Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. Each particle of universe attracts each other particle. The force of attraction between two particle because of their masses is called the gravitational force of attraction. So in this video, we shall learn about gravitation, gravity and few related laws based on that. Before that, if you are new to the channel, please do subscribe and press the bell icon so that you will get the notifications of all the videos we upload here related to GPSTR exam, TET and Central TET, mainly of maths and science subjects. So on moving to the concept now about gravitation, actually Newton, he is the one who gave this universal law of gravitation according to Newton the force of attraction acting between two particles is directly proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them this is called as universal law of gravitation so imagine there are two particles of masses m1 and m2 and they are attracted by a force F1 and F2 and the distance between them is R. This force of attraction is directly proportional to the product of their masses. So M1 and M2 are the masses of these objects considered and it is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. And about this directly proportional and inversely proportional I have already explained in the previous videos please check the description box for those related videos of physics and hence we combine this since the left hand sides are force and right hand side you see which is directly proportional we write in the numerator which is inversely proportional we write in the denominator and when you remove this proportionality constant proportionality sign we have to write is equal to and with a constant term here we write the constant as g where this constant capital letter g is called as gravitational constant or it is also called as universal constant okay the value of g is 6.67 into 10 to the power of minus 11 newton meter square per kg square remember this value and the speciality of this universal gravitational constant is it remains same at all the places on the earth and it is independent of nature of particle temperature and medium etc let us make g as subject of the formula from this equation cross multiply f and r you get f into r square which is equal to g into m1 m2 and you keep the g in one side and shift this m1 m2 other side it goes to the denominator of this hence we get this equation for g g is equal to f r square divided by m1 into m2 so this is the expression for gravitational constant and this gravitational constant is defined as the force of attraction acting between two masses each of mass 1 kg placed at a separation of 1 meter okay this is the definition for gravitational constant g if you take this masses of the objects you consider two particles two masses of 1 kg each placed at a separation of 1 meter distance next on writing the SI unit of G, we use this relation G is equal to FR square by M1 into M2. SI unit of force is Newton. For distance, it is R is the distance between the objects or masses. So for 1 R it is meter, there is R square. So meter into meter, meter square divided by we have M1 into M2 m1 is the mass of an object hence kg is a unit for mass 
and s unit of another mass m2 is also kg kg into kg kg square when you take this kg to the numerator it becomes kg to the power of minus 2 so the si unit of gravitational constant is newton meter square per kg square okay the gravitational force of attraction is uh, significant between the heavenly bodies but it is insignificant between the ordinary bodies okay and uh, regarding the gravitational force we can note down few points that gravitational force between two masses is always attractive and gravitational force between two masses obeys inverse square law so that is by um, doubling the separation between the masses that is r distance is doubled the force of attraction between them reduces to one fourth please remember these values they may ask for the multiple choice questions okay and this uh, law of gravitation importance is newton used this law to explain the motion of the planets around the sun and also motion of the moon around the earth and the motion of the free falling body also he used the law of gravitation or universal law of gravitation that is the importance of universal law of gravitation and this force uh, due to very small magnitude of the value of g the gravitational force of attraction is not significant between the ordinary bodies i told it's in uh, it's not significant right so that is due to the very small magnitude value but it is quite significant between the heavenly bodies which are very ma massive very huge bodies now we shall move to an important concept that is kepler's law of planetary motion so johans kepler he gave three mainly three laws he proposed the laws on explaining the motion of the planets okay so the first law says about laws law of orbits he states all planets move around the sun in elliptical orbit with sun situated at one focus so you can see in this given figure this is the elliptical orbit here you can see the sun sun is at the point which is at the focus sun is not actually at the center it is at a point focus okay this is the point so the first law of kepler says about law of orbits all the planets move around the sun in the elliptical orbit with sun situated at one focus this is the first law second law of kepler's planetary motion says about law of areas so it states that an imaginary line that joins the planet to the sun sweeps sweeps out equal areas in equal intervals of time i repeat an imaginary line that joins the planet to the sun sweeps out equal areas in equal intervals of time imagine an object moves from point a to b and it sweeps out some area when you draw lines like this to the sun and imagine that it takes about for 10 hours okay to travel this distance then if the object is is in a place of a dash and it is moving to a particular place b dash and it takes here also 10 hours so if you imagine the area swept this say this is the area covered by the object for 10 hours in this place in this place also 10 hours it took to cover that so the area swept by the objects in equal interval of time is same okay so this area is a same Kepler's third law of planetary motions is about the law of periods. 
it says the square of the period of revolution of planet around the sun so imagine if this period of time period of the planet around the sun is taken as t square of that t square the square of the period of the revolution of the planet around the sun is proportional to the cube of the semi major axis of the eclipse traced out by the planet if you take the semi major axis distance as ca it proportional to the cube of it so t square uh, proportional to a cube we can consider so in this elliptical orbit if you draw major axis and this is the half of that will be the semi major axis so from here this distance is taken as a and the time period is taken as t t square will be proportional to a cube so this is about kepler's third law of planetary motion okay so we shall now move to and the concept force due to gravity the force due to gravity is the force with which the earth attracts a body towards itself is called as force due to gravity so this force can be written as f is equal to g m small m divided by r square where capital m is the mass of the earth small m is the mass of an object and r is the radius of the earth and g is you know gravitational constant and this force is calculated as f is equal to 9.8 newton that is a force due to gravity next acceleration due to gravity this is very important concept okay is e2 it is represented by small letter g normally we say this as gravity just g okay remember that acceleration due to gravity small letter g is different from capital letter g that is universal gravitational constant okay acceleration due to gravity g is defined as the rate at which the velocity of a freely falling body increases so imagine a, a body falls towards the earth at which rate it falls the speed at which speed at which rate the velocity increases of the falling body say is about acceleration due to gravity so it is represented by letter g and how do we get this actually we know for the free falling body the force will be f is equal to m into g f is equal to ma is newton second law in case of acceleration in case of gravity it is g and we have we already learned that force due to gravity f is equal to g m m by r square and you can equate this right hand side since left hand side is a force on equating that mg is equal to g m m by r square and make g subject of the formula it means take this m to the denominator m m get cancels so what is remaining g m by r square so this is the expression for acceleration due to gravity and the si unit of acceleration due to gravity is meter per second square the value of acceleration due to gravity g at a place on the surface of the earth is 9.8 meter per second square remember this value is very important for the numerical general we use this value we sub we use for substitutions especially in case of um, potential energy to calculate they'll give this value so this g value will vary even on the surface of the earth also it is not same on the surface of the earth all over okay and on moon this g value acceleration due to gravity is 1.6 meter per second square okay it is very less comparing with the value of g on the earth and this g value above the surface of the earth if you consider as g dash the expression for this g value acceleration due to gravity above the surface of the earth is equal to g of 1 minus 2 h divided by r where h is the height of an object above the surface earth surface suppose if here is the object and here is the earth surface and this is the expression for it and where r is the radius of the earth and when h height increases gravity 
decreases acceleration due to gravity decreases for the object as we go below the surface of the earth if you consider that is g double dash the expression for this g double dash is g of 1 minus d by r this is the expression for that and as we go down the earth the gravity acceleration due to gravity also decreases remember this might be asked for the um, multiple choice questions okay the explanations may not be asked to explain all this term but sometime you have to remember what does each term stands for okay where in this expression you can calculate this values of d d is the distance where you consider suppose if this is the center of the earth if you consider an object this is the depth and at this point you calculate the gravity as we move down and this is the distance and r is the radius of the earth okay clear so we shall continue this topic gravitation in the next video you keep practicing actually um, this nowadays you know we are blessed to have many sources like youtube but those days when we were preparing for those exams the only source was of library we used to collect books from library and refer but you all got many uh, sources so keep preparing for the exams so only few days are left give your full energy focus on the exams don't panic you can still cover up the portions you can still cover up the syllabus which is given still there is time you can focus on and revision is very important for the exam okay so if you like this video please give a thumbs up okay and thank you for watching thank you for your valuable comments